Okay, welcome back everybody. Um, we're going to be looking at the, um, the third and final part of 1.1 number systems following the new computer science IGCSE syllabus. Um, in this we're going to be looking at how to add two positive 8-bit numbers. We're going to be looking at overflow when we and, and how this is caused when we do add two positive 8-bit binary numbers. We're going to be looking at logical shifts on positive um, binary numbers and how we can um, multiply binary numbers and, um, and divide binary numbers using this method. We're then going to finish off with um, something called two's complement, two's complement notation. And this is new um, to the to the new syllabus, but this uh, this allows us to represent both positive and negative binary numbers. Once we've done that, we should be moving on, sticking with the um, data representation, but we'll be moving on to text, sound, and images. Okay, so adding binary numbers together. Well, in an, in the normal system, in a denary system, we'd be adding, we'd be looking at the units column first of all, and if we have one plus two, obviously that equals three. It's only when we carry over and we maybe add nine plus four, and we get four lots of units and one lot of ten, that we can sort of draw on that and see similarities in the in the denary system. So there are some rules, and here we go. We've got four rules. Um, if we have zero plus zero, obviously that's going to be a zero. It's the same in any number system. Um, one plus zero, of course, is still one. But when we get to the next two, one plus one would equal two, which in binary would be one lot of two and no lots of ones. And then if we have one plus one plus one, obviously this is three, but three is represented as um, one lot of two and one lot of one. So if we follow this method, we can look at this sum, which, which we've got here, this um, eight bits um, from two registers, um, register one and I've put register two underneath it as a simple sort of addition sum. We can go step by step through this together so we have 1 plus 0 obviously equals 1. Now we get to the third rule. 1 plus 1 is 2, but that would be no units, no 1s. So we carry over the 2. So 1 plus 1 again, we're going to do the same thing. 0, carry the 1. Here we've only got 1, so we pop that into the, um, into the, into the answer. 1 plus 1 again, 0, carry the 1. 1 plus 1 again, 0, carry the 1, and now we've got the final rule, 1 plus 1 plus 1 obviously equals 3, so that's 1 lot of 1 and 1 lot of 2 that we carry over, and we can put this into the final column to get the answer, 1, 1, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 1. Hopefully, looking at that, you, you, could, you can remember how you might change this, first of all, into a denary number, how we could convert that. And also, if we were to divide it in half and split it into two nibbles, how we might change this into an hexadecimal. Now, if we were to change the first number, the, fir the, first, um, the first digit in that first byte of information and change it to a 1, obviously when we add all these numbers together again, we'd end up with something with a ninth bit, something that's called an overflow. Um, this obviously would lead to errors in the sense that we can't have nine digits, nine numbers represented in an 8-bit number system. So we'd end up with problems there and the system might, might crash or it might ignore that extra digit so you wouldn't get the correct answer. Uh, we then move on. So logical binary shifts, 1.1.5. Okay, we're well, going to use this technique um, to shift numbers um, left and right, backwards and forwards, in a register. Um, obviously, with binary numbers, things need to be added together, taken away, removed. Um, but in this case, we're going to be multiplying uh, or dividing um, bytes, in this case, of information. So, if we were to shift the numbers in this system, or shift these ones and zeros across to the left, we would be multiplying. You'll see that in a moment. 
and if we shift them to the right going down the register so to speak then we will be dividing by two well, what does that mean we have a, an 8-bit register here below and it contains the denary number 21 you can see that it's, it's one lot of 16 one lot of 4 and one lot of 1 added together obviously 21 now if we shift these digits to the left if we move them one space okay um, we're going to get one lot of 32 one lot of 8 and one lot of 2 now that's obviously 42 which would be twice um, the value of 21 so 21 times 2 equals 42 when we're shifting we've got spaces we automatically put in a zero into the end column now you might some of you might um, see this and think ah this could cause problems and it does cause problems so as a bit, bit shift an empty position um, is replaced with a zero and obviously there are limits in an 8-bit number system as to how many zeros you can put in before it completely zeroes out so for example if I was to take this number here um, 1 lot of 64, 1 lot of 32 and 1 lot of 16 and I was to move this five places to the left da, 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 then we would end up with um, a register full of zeros okay but we've multiplied this number um, and obviously when we multiply this number the equivalent of um, denary value 112 or 112 we're not when we times it by 2 and 2 and 2 and 2 and 2 again we're not going to get purely zeros okay so here's some more examples um, what we're going to do first of all write 24 into the 8-bit register well that's um, obviously um, one lot of 16 and one lot of 8 okay so that's, that's straightforward we know that now we're going to shift to a logical shift going three places to the left so we're going up the register so shifting them one two three uh, as you can see there is um, times two times two times two which would equal 192 so we've times it to um, 24 times 2 to the 3 which represents the three shifts okay 192 now if we go back to the existing um, results the existing register which is 24 and we go two places to the right you can see there we've gone 1 2 we're basically dividing so 24 divided by 2 to the 2 2 shifts would equal 6 basically 24 um, divided by 2 is 12 and divided by 2 again would be 6 okay so that's how we multiply and divide using logical binary shifts okay and for the final bit we're going to be looking at two's complement um, on binary numbers how to represent negative integers um, when we're using two's complement so in this section again like the others we're going to assume um, the eight bit registers are being used for the, uh, in terms of the questions the only major difference that we gonna we're going to use in terms of these registers is we're going to change the heading of one of the numbers that being minus one to eight one to eight becomes minus one to eight of course that means that we no longer have 255 different character representations different sequences of ones and zeros because we've got the minus one to eight this refers to everything which has a one under minus one to eight is a negative number everything with a zero under the minus one to eight is a positive number so we basically split 255 into two, into two halves um, the positives being zero up to one, 127 and the negatives being minus 128 all the way up to minus 1 and here we can see that minus 128 would be one lot of minus 128 and nothing in the other columns whereas plus 127 the sort of biggest positive number we can have would be no lots of 128 and all the rest of the um, the columns being filled in with ones 
It is important to realize when applying two's complement to a binary number that the leftmost bit always determines the sign of the binary number. As I've just said, a one value in the leftmost bit indicates a negative number and a zero value in the leftmost bit indicates a positive number. I can't emphasize this enough. I'm gonna try and show you a number here, um, a representation of 51. And of course, if we look at this, you, you look and see, okay, we've got one lot of 32 one lot of 16, um, a 2 and a 1. It is exactly the same as how you would normally do it. There are no negative 128s. There are no positive 128s. In the same way, there's no 64s. Um, it is exactly the same. So if we want to represent the number minus 49, we're going to put a 1 under the minus 128. This shows that it's a minus number. And we're going to start with that number, minus 128. We're then going to add to it positive 64. Positive 64 plus minus 128 would give us minus 64. If we then add positive 8 to minus 64, we would get minus 56. Add positive 4, we would get minus 52. Add positive 2, we'd get minus 50. And finally, add positive 1, and we would get minus 49. And this is how we, rep how we represent the, the minus numbers, we're adding the positive numbers, the ones in green as you can see here, to the minus 128. But that's it. That's how you would do um, the two's complement representation of negative numbers. So have a practice, good luck with that, and remember if there's a 1 there, it's a minus number, and if there's a 0, it is a positive number. But the question will always say this is a representation of a twos complement binary number. That's it for now. Thank you very much indeed. Um, that, as I said at the beginning, is the end of this little bit 1.1. So thank you very much for watching. Um, next time, the next video um, will be 1.2 text, sound and images. If you haven't already, please subscribe. I will be doing these as quickly as possible. I'm trying for one video a week, but um, bear with me. So um, thank you very much indeed, and I will see you next time. Bye for now.